Hello everyone, happy Super Bowl Sunday. Let's get straight into the video. Number one, we have CPI data coming out on Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. Pre-market, all right? Quickly, when looking at this chart, the issue is that if there was no CPI data, this is a very, very bearish chart. And this is literally basically how I would assume the market would go. Just like this, it would basically bounce a bit. Um, we would stop at a certain resistance level and then fall. But because there's CPI data coming out on Tuesday, Monday will most likely be very, very choppy. And it's not going to be a continuation flush down of the momentum. Because on choppy days, IV is much higher. And when IV is much higher, we don't get as much follow through momentum. Patterns don't play out as well, and it's just way more choppy. So currently the issue, right? All of these, everything looks bearish, right? None of, none of these uh, setups look like a continuation upward where we're going to recover. At most, like I said, on a usual day, on a usual time frame, we would get a bit of a bounce to a resistance line and continue down because these huge red candles are not to be played with. So just let me clean this up. Just looking at this, it would take an enormous amount of buying pressure to basically regain uh, the upward momentum and for us to be bullish again. So the only thing is basically once we get uh, once cpi data comes out tuesday morning basically we can't uh change our bias tomorrow we can't change our bias monday into the close 100 percent, we're not gonna be able to do that all right basically we have to wait until tuesday uh, until after the news comes out and then even if on tuesday we close um say for example on tuesday we close above 412 all right this would if we close above 412 on tuesday this would just be a lotto call opportunity in my opinion it still would not be a reason to be extremely bullish on the market um and that's basically it i mean it's very very difficult for me to be extremely bullish on the market until we get like closes above these levels of resistance so we could get a bounce to these levels but i mean like it's I'm, I, just the setup just looks very very terrible the only thing that can change this setup is terrible bearishness is good cpi data and if the cpi data is bullish and we get a close above 412 then it still is not a huge huge strong reason to be um very overly weighted long it's still a reason to be in smaller longs basically because the market can still just reverse right back down after a fake green candle because at the moment, everyone is very, 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 very uh, greedy. Every single person is extremely bullish. Everything looks like there's a lot of bullishness in the market. We're in an uptrend. Every single time we've had an uptrend, there have been big drawdowns. And we haven't really gotten that yet. And I would be very, very shocked. I mean, the biggest, the most... um. <laughs> In my opinion, I think the most um, pain to retail investors would be a rip to 425 or up here, basically, and creating another leg up. So if we get this uh, highs broken above on the SPY, we'll end up, a lot of people end up being late bulls. And as they are late bulls, that would be the perfect time for it to rip down. And I think that that scenario would be the most pain to retail but for now things you know they very very clearly still look very bearish you it's very difficult to, <laughs> to lean extremely long until we get uh breaks and holds above any of these major resistance levels but you know if we get a break above 411 412 then we can get into lotto calls but the safer play would just be to scale into longer term puts but yeah, aside from that, there's not really much else to look at. There's not really... Oh, sorry. Actually, the dollar is also another thing that um, it's curling upwards. So the dollar looks like it can continue going up. And we know that the dollar has an inverse relationship to the market. So if the dollar is falling, then the market should be going up. But as the dollar is going up, the market should be falling. So 
the dollar clearly looks bearish, right? But then when you look at the bonds, the bonds um, are very overextended to the downside. And um, on Thursday, I believe, yeah. So on Thursday, I said that as we got a one like touch outside of the lower level of the bands, we can continue to see uh, weakness out of the bonds. So once again, if you know the bonds and the market have a correlated relationship, so if the bonds are doing well, then the overall market should also be doing well. And as the bonds, you know, show this much weakness. If this was a normal stock, it would make sense that we get a bit of a bounce and then a continued pullback. So that is what I'm assuming is also going to happen on the bonds. Overall, man, it's very, very difficult for us to be bullish on the market. And I don't want to draw this out any longer. We have to wait until CPI data comes out. But really, that's it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys bright and early Monday morning. Thank you.